We continue our discussion on transcription, and in this video, we are going to talk about the RNA polymerase 1 transcription, and specifically the initiation step in that process. To explain this process, we'll discuss the promoters and transcription factors involved in this transcription. We will also talk about the RNA polymerase 1, and finally, we will see how all of these come together to form the pre initiation complex. Now, the RNA polymerase 1 transcription is actually very unique in that, that this polymerase transcribes only one gene, and this is the ribosomal RNA gene. This one gene means that the RNA polymerase 1 recognizes one type of promoter only, but this one gene is actually present in multiple copies. Sometimes they even appear in clusters, and these copies are found on almost all chromosomes. Humans have about 400 copies of the ribosomal RNA genes. Some copies are active and some copies are inactive. But the extraordinary thing here is that almost 50% of all transcription happening in a cell comes from RNA polymerase 1 transcription, which is the transcription of the ribosomal RNA. Now, because there is only one promoter to discuss, let's take a closer look at this promoter. In this promoter, there are two special elements. One of these elements is between position negative 100 and negative 150. And this element is known as the UPE, which stands for upstream promoter element. The second major element of the promoter is the core promoter, which is present between position negative 45 to plus 20. This means that the core promoter overlaps with the transcriptional start site, which is the plus 1 position. And following the promoter, you have the 18S, 5.8S, and 28S ribosomal RNA genes. Notice that there are three genes, but there is only one promoter available, which means that you can only produce one RNA. These types of RNAs where you can have multiple products within the same RNA are called polycystronic RNA. Going back to the promoter, this core promoter is essential for the transcription of the ribosomal RNA genes. But the upstream promoter is not always required. Its main job is to enhance the transcription rate. And sometimes you see that some ribosomal RNA genes actually do not have the UPE in their promoter. This completes our discussion on the promoters. Now let's talk about the transcription factors that recognize and bind to these promoter elements. And just some additional information about the promoters, the upstream promoter element and the core promoter are very GC rich regions, which is very unusual for a promoter of a gene. But within the core promoter, somewhere close to the transcriptional start site, you have a small AT rich region. The first transcription factor that enables the process of initiation is the upstream binding factor, which comes as a dimer, and it binds to both upstream promoter element and the core promoter. Let's talk about this UBF factor in a little more detail. As we just said, UBF stands for upstream binding factor, and it binds UPE and the core promoter. UBF is also known as polymerase 1 activating factor, and it contains HMG box domains. The HMG box domains stands for high mobility group domains, and the function of the HMG box is to bind the DNA. And upon binding, they can modulate the DNA structure. It'll become clear in a moment how this works. So for this reason, the UBF can be thought of as a structural protein. And if you look at the monomeric form of the UBF protein, you will find that there is a dimerization domain at the N-terminus end, and the HMG boxes which bind the DNA are in the middle. And there are four of these boxes in each monomer. And towards the end, you have a transactivation domain, and at the C-terminus end, there is a SL1 binding domain. So HMG boxes help the UBF dimer to bind at the promoter region. And upon binding, the UBF induces a topological change in the DNA, where it binds around the promoter. And this is what we meant when we said that it binds the DNA and modulates its structure. And if we visualize these topological changes, what we notice is that when the UBF dimer binds, the DNA wraps itself around the UBF dimer. Specifically, it is the core promoter and the UPE which wrap around the UBF. This structural modulation of the DNA decondenses the chromatin around the promoter, 
which enables the recruitment of SL1 protein. And this happens via the interaction of the SL1 binding domain in the UBF protein. So let's shed some light on the SL1 factor, which stands for selectivity factor 1. SL1 actually has low affinity towards the DNA, but its affinity synergistically increases when it is in contact with the UBF protein. The SL1 binds at the AT rich region at the core promoter, which overlaps with the transcriptional start site. And actually, SL1 is not a single protein, it is a complex of TBP, the Tata binding protein that we saw in RNA polymerase 2 transcription, and TAFs, which are TBP associated factors. Typically, there are four of these TAFs in a complex with the TBP, and this makes up the SL1 complex. TAFs serve the DNA binding function in the SL1. So visually, if we were to represent SL1, it would look something like this. Now we can complete our picture of the promoter and UBF when the SL1 protein binds, and you notice that the SL1 binds near the AT rich region in the core promoter. It specifically has higher affinity for the core promoter and not the UPE. And this is why we said that the core promoter is an essential component in the transcription initiation, because it can recruit both of these transcription factors. This complex of TBP and UBF enables the recruitment of RNA polymerase 1. And let's discuss a little bit about this enzyme. Now, polymerase 1 comes in two forms, 1 alpha and 1 beta. The active form, which works in the transcription, is 1 beta. And this is because it has a lot of important binding factors. The three major proteins that bind to the 1 beta are the RRN3, also known as TIF1A, CK2, which is a kinase, and topoisomerase 2 alpha. Now, the binding of the polymerase depends primarily on the RRN3 protein, because it binds the UBF and the SL1 factors. And this is also why polymerase 1 alpha is not recruited at the promoter, because it doesn't have the RRN3 protein associated with it. One major difference to note is that the RNA polymerase 1 does not have the C-terminal domain the YSPT-SPS that we saw in the RNA polymerase 2. And now we can complete the picture of RNA polymerase 1 bound to the promoter, where RRN3 interacts with the SL1 and the UBF near the core promoter. And if upstream promoter element is also present, the UBF dimers also interact with each other. The polymerase also carries with itself the CK2 and the topo isomerase. And don't forget that this active polymerase here is the 1 beta form. And this completes the pre-initiation complex formation, which is ready to clear the promoter and enter elongation.